Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan from Boredom Sated. And I'm Boris from Boredom Sated. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to continue our conversation on the two new uh, playtest classes from the Guns and Gears book that will eventually be coming out later this year. And that second class is The Inventor. Tony Stark. Uh, that's really how it feels. You're playing like an 18th or 19th century Tony Stark. Yes. So, um, first of all, key ability for the inventor is intelligence, which you would assume. Um, right. You actually don't start with any really great skills. Uh, you, you only even start with trained in crafting, but you get better at crafting real quick. Um, I think you actually get a thing that makes it so that you're automatically an expert in crafting pretty quickly. And then from there, you'll take it on your own. Uh, yes, at level three, you become an expert in all crafts and always adjust your inventions to achieve the perfect configurations. Anyway, yes. so the way this class works is a couple of things, but um, let's just go with this. This class is kind of specialized, but not in the normal way you would think like you don't get, and this is one of the things that we had a conversation about with this. You don't get legendary in anything. Yeah. You don't get legendary in any of the things that you would have to as a, as a character class. The main reason why is because your main stat really is crafting and you just get legendary in that when you pick legendary crafting at probably level 13 yeah. um, or level 15 whichever one you know anyway right. Right. so the way this class works is you choose one of three innovations that you want to focus on yeah, yeah. and uh, it's weapon armor or companion and uh i i have to say that um you know uh they're, they're interesting in their own way, but I, I really feel the, the armor is probably the, the best. Uh, the, the only issue with the armor is you also then have to build on strength because of the strength requirement, but it more than makes up with it uh, as you uh, advance to the levels. Uh, well, the idea here is if you're going with the armor, you're wearing – one thing that should be mentioned is this is a medium armor class. Right. So either way, no matter what you're doing, you're most likely not going to have to worry about dex as much and worry more about strength. Um, your starting armor has a strength of 16 necessary to be able to run it correctly. So it's important in the first place to make sure that you are playing – if you're going to go armor, you have to have a high strength. If you're going weapon, you can choose between going with a strength or a dex, but you're probably going to, like, it depends on what your plan is for the character. Where the construct, now it doesn't matter as much what you're doing right. because you're probably going to be spending more of your actions messing with your construct. Uh, now, yeah, one yeah. new keyword, uh, we'll go a little bit about other things in a minute, but one new keyword we have to talk about is something called unstable. Unstable actions rely on experimental functions of your innovation that you cannot fully predict. After an unstable action is used on an innovation, which all of the unstable actions are, um, if you attempt to use another unstable action on it, you have to make a DC 17 flat check. That means you have a 20% chance of making the check. On a failure, the innovation malfunctions in a spectacular fashion such as an explosion or shower of sparks, wasting the action and making the in, uh, innovation incapable of handling further unstable action. An innovation's creator can spend 10 minutes returning their innovation and making adjustments to return to functionality, making it safe to use uh, an unstable in, on that innovation again. So basically, it's sort of like this class's version of refocusing. You need 10 minutes after you've used an unstable action to make sure that you can use an unstable action again. Yeah. I mean, uh, although uh, every feat that utilizes the unstable is a significant power boost uh, to whatever you, you, you're doing. And um, having a 20% chance to be able to use it twice 
in the combat is is not bad. So the first uh, unstable one you get, you automatically get at level one, which is called Explode. Uh, you make your innovation explode, hopefully not damaging the innovation and damaging the creatures nearby. It does 2d6 fire damage and a 5-foot emanation around you, or if it's uh, not something you're holding, around your minion. There's a basic reflex save. As your level increases, so does the power of the explosion. At level 5, it increases by an additional d6, and every 2d2 two levels after, it goes up by another d6. If you have the Breakthrough Innovation character uh, class feature... Breakthrough comes at level 7, uh, then you can choose either a 5 or 10 foot anima, em, emanation. And if you have the Revolutionary Innovation, which I believe you get at level 17, uh, you can additionally choose a 5, 10, or 15 foot emanation. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. It is The Breakthrough is at level 9, not at level 7. And the revolutionary is at level 17, as I said. Yeah. So you yeah. get explosion right off the bat just for being an inventor, which is neat. That's really all I can say. It's neat. Yes, yes. Um, um, so the, so the, the interesting thing is each um, skill, uh, each, uh, I guess it's a breakthrough uh, scientific uh, identity that you take uh, has continuous unique add-ons that you do depending on whether it's a weapon, armor, or companion. Now, um, these are uh, significant add-ons uh, that uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, I think going through each one uh, is... Uh, going to be too much but uh, I let's uh, let's just add uh, for armor uh, because it does give you the um, the better quality medium armor uh, that you start off with so it is um, it begins with an AC bonus of four and a dex cap of one so you could have a plus five to your AC yeah. right off the bat Check penalty two, uh, speed penalty minus five, strength like we mentioned, 16th. It's a bolt two. Uh, and uh, then you can add uh, various things that either give you some sort of resistance or reactions, and it goes on, uh, so on and so on. Now, the so interesting start, part is, yeah. Yeah, so to, to start all of the ACs, you, first of all, you get a uh, initial modification grants you a resistance of two plus half your level to a number of damage types based on that. So the damage types are either force and sonic, acid and electricity, uh, positive or negative, and then you can choose based on your alignment, which is an in interesting, or you can go with cold and fire. Uh, and that's what you get for that, but it's a standard medium armor other than that. Uh, to go on right. to the other ones, the construct is a basic construct. However, what you can do is you can either make it um, have a swim speed, you can give it low light vision, uh, low light vision, dark vision, and imprecise tremor sense, or you can increase its speed to make it 40 foot range, or you can give it a mini rocket launcher, um, which does a D4 bludgeoning or piercing damage. Uh, and it has the propulsive trait and a range increment of 30 feet. Yes. Or you can upgrade its cortex, which gives it a crude intelligence, making it so that your innovation becomes trained in, in intimidation, stealth, and survival. But other than that, its stats are essentially the same as an animal companion. Now, a couple of the basic rules we would do need to go into, and I just want to get through them quickly. You can only have one construct. It says specifically you cannot have a construct and an animal companion. It says specifically you cannot do that. Um, and looking through the construct rules, they're almost exactly the same as having an animal companion without – and you get the cool additional things that you can kind of choose what, a, what you want to have the animal do. But overall, it just feels a little – like it's cool, but it feels a little underwhelming. Yes, it's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's maybe an Animal Companion Plus. I think it's um, maybe equivalent uh, to a familiar, 
uh, be, because of all the additional items you 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 get to it, but it's it has more than familiar has, uh, but um, it, it gives you a few additional things that uh, just a basic animal companion wouldn't have. I I feel like overall that the like by the time it's done, the difference between having the con construct or the animal companion, a construct might feel slightly better. But that's only because of the fact that you're literally putting your entire skill set into having a pet. There is yeah. nothing that you're going to be doing for yourself. Your entire skill set, all of your feats are going to be based on buffing and making that thing stronger. And it's not even going to be a master at attacking. It's still only ever going to max out at expert. It's right. going to have really high stats, but it's never going to be that strong. So it's a cool concept and i love the role-playing aspect that you can put to it but overall i'm neither of us are really that sold on the idea of nah. going with the uh, companion so for weapon to finish it off um you can either if you take a simple weapon you can increase the damage die by one step also you can give it versatility so it can have two attack types instead of one if you're using a melee weapon you can give um you can include tangling wires or straps to have a flexible construction which gives your innovation the grapple and trip traits. Uh, you can make a hefty composition, which makes blunt surfaces and sturdy con construction, makes your weapon hefty and mace-like, which gives your weapon shove and versatile, uh, blunt. So you can have a, you can basically decide to give yourself a uh, um, guts sword uh, for, for those purposes. Uh, modular head, you can construct a multi-purpose adjustable striking surface, uh, which makes it so you can use different types of ammunition. Um, basically, this gives you uh, the modular trait, uh, which is uh, how you change damage types for a ranged weapon. So essentially, like you're now, we're now talking about using a gun. Um, pacification, which basically means that you can uh, your weapon gains disarm and non-lethal. Razor prongs can give you trip and the versatile trait, or a segmented frame. Um, you can interact to collapse the item down to light bulk, so you can basically, like, think of a, a, a gun that then kind of collapses into a smaller gun, so it's easier to conceal. It's neat, but all of the level one weapon traits are kind of more neat than useful. Right, right. Uh, going into their, then, the rest of their base things, uh, Overdrive is their next skill, which basically uh, is a um, one action that you can only use once per minute, but it basically makes it so that your gadget or gizmo becomes much more powerful for a short period of time. Um, uh, if you critically succeed on a craft check with a standard DC... Uh, your weapon or whatever it is deals additional damage equal to your intelligence modifier for a full minute. Uh, on a success, it's half your intelligence modifier. Uh, on a failure, you failed to do it, but you're allowed to try again. And on a critical failure, something explodes and you take some fire damage equal to your level. Um, as on a success, critical success or critical failure, you cannot use overdrive again for one minute. It is a very, very cool concept. Uh, especially because, again, crafting is probably going to be your only legendary. Yeah. So it's a cool thing to add in. So then um, then you have your standard. Uh, you get your perla, uh, uh, peer, uh, peerless uh, inventor, at uh, which gains the inventor skill feed even if you don't meet the prerequisite. Uh, then you have your general... Uh, items then you have your reconfigure so that you can um, during downtime tinker and ch uh, switch out uh, and this is a third level switch out uh, different uh, whatever selections you've made for your invention and uh, change them for the day uh, uh, then uh, yeah a lot of normal stuff a lot of the basic things that you would yeah. normally get um, if you chose weapon at fifth level, you get the access to the critical specialization. If you didn't, you don't. Um, right. At level seven, everything gets an offensive boost. 
uh, which basically means that all your weapon, if you chose a weapon, does an additional d6 damage of a type of your choice. Ch uh, cold, fire, electricity, bludgeoning, slashing, piercing, or acid. If you chose your um, your pet, it gets the additional d6. And if you chose armor, then it's your unarmored attacks with your armor that get it. So if yeah. you did add-ons that gave you an attack with your weapon or armor, it would do that. Or if you're just using, like... Um, armored spikes or something like that then we get to level but nine it, uh, which is no it also adds it to one melee of your ch uh, choice also it's either oh, unarmored yeah. or one melee. so either unarmored or one melee strike with one weapon you choose during daily preparation so yep. yeah which again makes it so that armor is still probably the best choice the better uh, yeah. level nine get your breakthrough and your breakthrough is where you really get to add some fun stuff Right. Um, well, again, for the armor, it becomes uh, heavy armor, and you bec you get the same proficiency with it as, as if medium, but only with that armor. You can't put on any other heavy armor. Uh, the AC bonus increases to plus five. The dex uh, cap uh, is still a plus one. If you have a strength uh, of at least 16, uh, then instead of just reducing the uh, panel, the speed penalty by five, you completely uh, ignore it. And the speed penalty, if your strength is not 16, is 10 because it is heavy armor. Uh, it is bulk three and armor trait of bulwark. Yeah, which is really good. It basically becomes kind of like better version of uh, half plate. Um yes. And that's one of your options. You can also choose to get damage resistance if you want to instead. But having the extra AC is just so useful that it's hard to determine like having something else. Right. Um, now for your construct, you can choose advanced weaponry. Um, basically, you can choose um, to gain one choice of your initial mo uh, weapon modifications chosen from uh, the list that we already talked about. Um, basically, you can give it an additional attack. Uh, you can also give it climbing limbs or a durable construction to make it uh, increase its maximum hit points. Or you can refine its cortex even further to give it expert proficiency in a lot of those skills. It also becomes an expert. Um, it gets master proficiency in anything it already had expert in. If you have the revolutionary uh, innovation class feature, which we're going to get to in a little while... Uh, those proficiencies will increase, increase to master or legendary if it was necessary to do that. Um, obviously, in order to have a refined cortex, you have to have chosen the, uh, the uh, upgraded cortex in the first place. Weapons, you want to finish those off? Yeah. yeah. So for uh, weapons, you get uh, inconspicuous appearance, which uh, your um, uh, weapon doesn't seem uh, like it's a weapon and is easy to conceal. And surprise attack, it gains backstabber and a versatile uh, uh, puncture. Um, uh, advanced range fighter, uh, only for range weapons. Uh, it in, uh, um it's a scope or a targeting device, making your innovation especially good at hitting weak points. Your innovation gains the sniper trade and increased range increment by 10 feet. Aerodynamic construct, melee, you carefully engineer the shape of your weapon to maintain its momentum. Uh, so it now get, uh, gets to uh, uh, have the sweep trade and versatile uh, slash. Uh, integrated gauntlet, one-handed weapon only, can't have the two-handed trait. Combines your weapon with a gauntlet, making it so you, that you can quickly switch between attacking with your weapon and tickering using your hands. Your innovation uh, gains the freehand trait, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, Many-fold alloy, uh, it allows you to uh, combine different alloys so your weapon can be cold iron and silver rather than trying to switch and guess. Uh, and tang uh, tangle line uh, for throwing weapons only. Your weapon has an extendable line that can be used to knock your enemies over and allow you to quickly recall the weapon. Your innovation gains the range trip trait and the tether trait. The range trip trait yeah. is also in this class, but we'll go into that later. 
Um, let's finish and, off the, the abilities, uh, which basically are a lot of the normal stuff. Um, your uh, proficiency for perception will end at expert. Your proficiency at, re at uh, reflex will end at expert. Your proficiency for um, will saves and fortitude saves will get to master. You will get the resolve and juggernaut, so you will get critical successes on, su on successes. Uh, weapon mastery gets to master at level 13, and armor mastery gets to 19, and that's going to be master of medium armor as well. So again, you do get a lot of masteries, which is nice, but no legendaries. The final major thing we have to talk about, again, this is in your just build. We haven't even talked about feats yet, but the feats are actually kind of the underwhelming right. portion of this character class, is the revolutionary innovation. Uh, the revolutionary innovation is your 17th level modification that you add to your character, to your, uh, your innovation. Um, for armor, uh, you can give yourself uh, resistance to all energy damage uh, equal to two plus half your level, and that's acid, cold, electricity, fire, force, negative, positive, and sonic. Uh, but you have to have the uh, harmonic oscillator, metallic reactants, or thermal insulation modification to select this. Two, that's one choice. You can also choose to have uh, your modification... Um, uh, you gain resistance uh, two plus your level in if you took dense plating, layered mesh, or tensile absorption, which basically is if you wanted to go with the physical damage types, you get two plus your level instead of two plus half your level. Um, physical protections. While wearing your armor, you gain resistance to all physical damage equal to two plus half your level. Uh, you have to have one of the, the damage types. This makes it so you are now resistant to all of the, the physical ones instead of just really good at one of them. One. Or... Rune capacity, which makes it so that you can add an additional magical rune to your armor that you couldn't do otherwise. So you can have three, you can have four plus uh, uh, runes with, on a plus three potency rune instead of only three. Overall, yeah. those are, they're okay. It depends on what you want to do. Uh, for the uh, construct, you can give it flight, because neat. You can give it runic keystone, which basically gives it, uh, you can make it so that it gets some cool uh, properties that you can add to it. You can give it resistance five to all damage, except for adamantine. Uh, you can make it so that it turns into a wall. Yeah, you can take, you can turn it into a wall. As a two action activity, it becomes a 10 by 30 foot wall. That's impressive. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and finally, for the weapon, um, you can give the weapon backswing and shove, which is nice. Uh, deadly strike, if your innovation has the deadly trait, the deadly die becomes a D12, D12 instead, of, uh, uh, instead of gaining deadly D8, because that was one of the options at level 1. Uh, enhanced damage. Um, if your you can increase your damage your weapons die damage type by one, so D4 to six, six to eight, eight to ten, or ten to twelve. Um, this is not uh, cumulative with the complex simplicity one, but if you're not using a simple weapon, you can use a one-handed D10 weapon, which seems real good. Um, you can also give a weapon the forceful trait only by uh, the mo momentum retainer. Um, extend, extensible weapon is what it says, but I feel like it's supposed to be extendable, uh, which yeah, basically yeah. makes it so that your weapon gets the reach trait. Um, it also your reach increases by 10 feet instead of the usual five, if you already have the reach trait. So you kind of can become inspector gadget, um, impossible alloy. I believe what that's going to make it is it so that you can get through basically all DR, um, you've managed to create several metal alloys that seem to work for you, only you, allowing you to damage opponents vulnerable to every one of the seven sky metals. Your innovation is treated as abyssium, adamantium, uh, jetsium, inu uh, inubrix, noqual, oricolum, and sycotite. This allows you to damage more damage to a variety of creatures, though you don't apply any of the other special effects or weapons made of the sky metals. I don't even Can know what most of that. Can you say that three is. times fast? <laughs> no. And finally, uh, you can do rune capacity on your weapon as well to give you an additional rune there. 
the last right. things that need to be mentioned now, there is that you now. can now completely change your weapon every day. Uh, instead of only being able to change one thing on each of your items, you can change the entire thing. Right. Now, um, the the, prob- the the one issue I have of going through all the feats as we normally do is that um, uh, it really de- the feats are useful depending on which, um, you know, path you decide to go, whether you go weapon, armor, or... Uh, con- uh, construct. So I, I mean, I the, I think I would just rather than trying to d- tell us which our favorite because we both feel armor is the uh, is the better one. We would just select the ones that address that. Uh, I think let's just discuss the the really cool uh, ones at level eighteen, which uh, sure. I I think is. So the, the value added you get for this class are definitely the ones at level 18. Now there's some a bunch of other ones that you can take. There's a bunch of other really cool feats in this class, uh, but honestly, we kind of want to uh, wind this video down anyway because it's gone on for a while. But the two coolest feats are um, the ones that are the ones like, the coolest feats are the ones at level 18. And the reason why Boris especially loves the armor one is because it is called negate damage. What does it do? So negate damage, your innovation activates various devices you prepared ahead of time, forming an unstable chain reaction to all uh, but negate incoming damage, reducing the damage you would take by 50. Hey, that dragon breath is not so harsh after all. Uh, yeah, so it is, a, uh, it is a reaction. It has the unstable, unstable trait, yeah. so you can only do it once every 10 minutes. But you just straight up say uh, DR50. Right. And uh, if you take, and if you, depending on which of the uh, other damage reductions, you could end up with uh, not taking about um, 72 points of damage. For, uh, yeah. If you do it correctly, because this says reduce yeah. damage, not damage reduction. So because right. of that, you, they could actually stack. Now, right. one that I think is really, really freaking cool, and by the way, don't get me wrong, the Construct one is also cool at level 18, but my favorite one um, is the, the Weapon one. And honestly, the Weapon and the Construct one are exactly the same. It's just attacking with a weapon or attacking with your Construct. Three actions. Make a weapon attack against every foe within 30 feet. If you're using a melee weapon, the weapon flies out of your hand, attacks every single thing, and then comes back to your hand. Yep. No multiple yep. attacks. It's, it's a minion killer. <laughs> and Engine of Destruction is the construct version, and it does the exact same thing. Uh, or, yeah, it's uh, your command, your innovation, except that in store of its normal actions, it strides once, so it moves, and it makes a strike against each creature within 30 feet of it. The multiple attack penalty does not increase until after the construct has made all of its attacks. Right. So, so it, my biggest problem with doing the construct is basically that the construct doesn't get as good as the player does because of the fact that they, again, the expert in skills and like the overall things that you can add to it just aren't as good as what you can do to yourself. Which is the reason why I feel like if you're going to go that way, I would probably just go with the weapon innovation instead. Yep. Uh, so overall, I would say it's an interesting class. It's probably more useful in a m- significantly role-playing type of environment. I would like to see how it, how they build out the archetype uh, for it because honestly, as a single class, uh, I probably wouldn't uh, play it myself. Uh, yeah, as we've talked about this more, I've actually kind of talked myself more and more into the idea of playing it. Um, but at the same time, it's still like, it's still just not, in my opinion, strong enough. And as I've said, even if you fully make out the the, the construct, you start with a, six, uh, with a plus three in strength or dex, it all goes up, both of them go up at the same rate. 
uh, with advanced, it goes up by one incredible. It goes up by one and paragon. It goes up by one. So it's final bonus will be a plus six. So that's the same final bonus you're going to have unless you actually have a, a, uh, a, 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 the, the final item, which means that you're going to have a plus seven a, and you're going to have a master. Or a a your attacks, yeah. Whereas it's never going to get back past expert. So because of the fact that it never gets past expert and un unarmed attacks, putting all of your points into something that is not even going to be able to hit things your level consistently seems really weak to me. Yeah. yeah. So, so that said, um, I think uh, depending on the, how they do the archetype, it might be an interesting add-on to maybe a, a champion or maybe a investigator, but... Overall, I think the way it's designed right now, it's a bit weak. Uh, yeah, I, I pretty much agree. Um, I, again, I, I've kind of talked myself into the idea of wanting to try it, but I don't think it would be super strong. Um, I think it would be more fun in a role-playing campaign than in a, uh, in a serious campaign, because again, the problem with the Pathfinder 2 rules in general are that you really need to make sure that you can hit. Right. And that's an issue with this character class because intelligence is your base, but you're not attacking with intelligence. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, if you, anybody wants us to go through more of the feats, we can do that in another video. We're definitely going to look at the, uh, back at this once the official rules come out for, for this, because that will definitely be more inter interesting to take a look at. Um, so again, um, I hope if you guys like the video, please like uh, everyone, please subscribe like 5% of our overall uh of views are from subscribed viewers so please uh, let us know and uh, we'll try this again a little later again if anyone wants to see how some of the other feats work out let us know and we'll comment about it yep, yep. well i'm on board from board and say that i'm jonathan see you guys next time um, and have a good yep